So um, at the level, I'm going to censor this a little bit. Uh, so you have the OHR, right, with PIC, right, and the EU representative. That's the representatives of the international community, kind of supervising at this point that you know things go on and so on and it's peace and so on. But that's not the structure of the state of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia and Herzegovina, at the level of the of Bosnia and Herzegovina itself, remember Bosnia and Herzegovina constituted of what? Uh, two two entity. Well, well, how was it? Two um, two entities. One is the Federation and the other one is the Republika Srpska. Now we're talking about the level of the, the central level, the sort of quote-unquote national. At the national level, there is um, uh, an executive, which is a three-member presidency. So you have a presidency at the, at the, at the level of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the executive, right? is a three-member presidency. And here's where we get to the, one of the essential aspects here. Uh, because at each, uh, at each level, both at the level of Bosnia and Herzegovina and at the individual components, entities, right, the Federation and the Republic, um, you have representation both of the geographical constituency but also separately uh, of the cultural constituency. Okay? So at the level of <coughs> Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's not only the, the individual components that are represented, right? As in any federal or confederal system, you would expect that at the level of the, of the national level, you would have the com components represented. In the US, the Senate represents the states. So you have 50 states, right? And each state has two senators. So each state is represented in the, in, the, in the Senate. And originally, it was the legislatures of each state, legislatures of each state that actually appointed those senators. Nobody voted for them. Because okay? the Senate, the upper house in the United States, as in other federal states, uh, systems, represents the individual entities, not the people, right, that compose the state, the, that compose the United States. So the United States, right? Two houses. The upper house was representing the individual and the uh, individual state, the individual regions, right? While the lower house represented the people. Same here, but it's not only the territorial entities that will be represented, but distinctly the cultural entities. So you will have a representation based on ethnicity, of ethnicity. This is why you have a three-member presidency, and you have guessed. The three-member presidency, one it has to be Bosniak, one has to be Croat, one has to be Serbian. Okay? So the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina is both constituted of two, of two entities and three ethnic groups, basically. So that's the essence here. And actually, to, to tell you, we, uh, you know, something, we will not recover, of course, it, but uh, this is very similar to Belgium. Belgium has an even more complicated system, uh, if it's possible. And it is also, uh, rep Belgium is cons uh, considered to be constituted of territorial entities and then separately of ethnic entities. Same in Bosnia. Bosnia and Herzegovina is constituted of two territorial uh, entities and also is the state of three ethnic groups. Ethnic groups that are not, obviously, two entities, three ethnic groups, right? So they're not distributed, you know, clearly either here or there. So, the point is that uh, the, the presidency uh, is a three-member presidency um, uh, which rotates every eight months. They are elected for four years. So, the presidency is elected for four years and it has a two conse conse consecutive mandate limit. They can, um, uh, all three are elected at the same time. Uh, popularly, so it's popularly elected. But, uh, the... Here it is. Let's say this is Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is the federation, which is larger, and this is the, the Serbian Republika Srpska. So this is the Bosnian Croat Federation, and this is the Republika Srpska, right? the two entities. The Bosnian and Croat Federation elects the Bosnian and Croat member of the presidency, while the Republika Srpska elects the Serbian. 
at the same time every four years. Okay, so what does this executive do? It is both head of state, represents Bosnia and Herzegovina abroad, but also has important head of government functions, so some head of government functions. Uh, besides representing Bosnia and Herzegovina, it also has important roles in foreign affairs, budget, budget, that's clear head of government function, and over the armed forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which I, you know, abbreviate as being Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is Ser uh, Serbian, Slavic for uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Southern Slavic, yeah. Serbo Croatian. Um, Furthermore, each individual member of the presidency has veto power over decisions that are usually taken through consensus, uh, but uh, or at least uh, but uh, at least majority uh, of the presidency. But if one of the members uh, considers that the given decision has a very destructive uh, effect on the national interest of his ethnic group, he can veto that decision. And then the decision is sent to the legislature of either of these uh, uh, entities. If a Croat considers that this is destructive of Croat interests, then they ask the legislature of the Croat part, right? of the Bosnian Croat part. If this, if the Serbian member of the presidency considers the same thing, the veto is not an absolute veto. They ask for a second opinion from the legislature of the. Serbian part. Now, again, remember that the Bosnian Croat Federation is not only Bosnian Croats, there is a significant Serbian minority here, uh, as you saw on the map, and other ethnic groups, Roma, Jewish, yeah, significant Jewish population, same here. It's not all Serbian, right? that's the point. It has other ethnic minorities, but it's a majority Serbian, majority Bosnian and Croat. Okay, good. Then there is a legislature, and again, does this remind you of uh, Austria, Hungary, and so on. Well, there is a council of ministers, right, which is a sort of a cabinet, and there is a PM, which is called a chairman. I don't want to call him a prime minister, but it's called the chairman of the council of ministers. And these ministers, this is the, still part of the executive. So you have a presidency, a PM, or basically chairman. plus cabinet, council of ministers. So there is a PM and cabinet, that's, that's just saying that way, it's, they're called chairman and council of ministers, but it's PM and cabinet. But the Bosnia is the national level, okay? This is all at the national level. Yeah. So here too, in the cabinet, the um, In the, the ministries are distributed based on uh, the ministries are distributed based on um, ethnicity, and when we, I'm going to explain this principle. It has a name, right? but the point is that this is a typical model. I'm going to give it to you right now: consociational or consociative or consensus-based model of setting up a political system and its function. In, in a key thing of in this is that. The positions in the government, both in the legislature and in the executive, there will be seats assigned or positions assigned, reserved for different ethnic groups. So you see, it, it, but it, it is not a winner-take-all thing, because that leads to conflict, right? But it, they reserve positions, reserve positions in both the, um, in all the institutions of the state, to the different ethnic groups. Okay, the, this executive, the PM and the cabinet, they deal with only certain things because the national government deals only with certain things. Uh, deals with foreign affairs, foreign trade, finance and treasury, communication and transport, human rights and refugees, justice, security, defense. So just certain aspects are given to the, to the uh, uh, you know, national government, right? So you have basically two entities, the Federation, or Bosnian Croat Federation and the uh, Srpska Republic, and who, who have their own government, but also give certain power
powers to the common Bosnia and Herzegovina government. And those powers are those that deal mostly with common interests like foreign affairs, defense, some general things. This is why it's almost a confederal system. Because most of the powers remain at the level of the individual governments. So the government of the Federation and the government of the Republic have actually most of the powers in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And they delegate a smaller set of powers to the common Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, government. This is, this is why it's called, if some many authors, and I would agree, consider it to be almost confederal. Because in a confederal system, most of the powers reside with the component entity, entities and they delegate some a smaller amount of powers to a central level of government. That's a confederal model. Still, it's somewhere in between federal and confederal. Switzerland has a similar model, by the way. And also a multi-member presence in Switzerland. Uh, so if you're taking my Western European politics, we'll talk about Switzerland and Belgium. Okay, so furthermore, so let's go. Uh, let's go further. Uh, we have a legislature at the Bosnia. Uh, so this is exactly right. Um, a presidency, PM, cabinet. Um, then, and I mentioned in the presidency, each of these rotate and take the presidency, like the, each of them is the main president, so to speak, every eight months. Again, similar to Switzerland. Switzerland works, it has worked for 800 years, so, you know. Um, then you have a legislature, which is bicameral, as you would guess, right? One representing the people, the other one representing the, the components. And indeed, you have a lower house called... House of Representatives, and you have an upper house called the House of Peoples. Again, it tells you something about it, right? And again, you see that here you see the US model, right? The House of Representatives, the so called lower house, 42 members, elected by the population, two thirds from here and one third from here. So they represent the people. Again, Big two, why two thirds from here, one third from here is because this is kind of the popula population wise, the federation has about two thirds of the population and the republic has about one third. As in the US, huh? these are a popular elected in accordance, and the number of seats corresponds to the number of, uh, you know, the size of the population in each uh, of the entities. The House of the Peoples is a sort of an upper house. This is not. Um, directly elected, but they are, it's there to represent the peoples, meaning the ethnic groups. So it has 15 members, so this one has 42, this one has 15 members. You have gaps. House of the peoples, this is not based on the size of each ethnic group, but five for each. So you have five, <coughs> five Bosnian, five Croat, five Serbia. And who appoints these? So 15, five for each ethnic group. Who appoints these? Now here's the, here's the, the or who elects these? The Serbian ones are elected by the parliament of the, the, the Serbian Republic, elects five. While the Bosnian and the Croats are elected by the Bosnian and Croat members of the House of Representatives. Okay, so it's indirectly elected. The House of uh, the Peoples, the upper house of the, the level of Bosnia and Herzegovina, is elected. The, the Serbian ones are elected from the legislature of the Serbian Republic, Repub Republika Srpska. Right? Don't confuse with Serbia. Right? It's a different country. Uh, and the Bosnian and Croat. Representatives are elected by the Bosnian and Croat members of the House of Representatives, not the Serbian members. So the Bosnians and Croats here elect the Bosnian and Croats members of the House of uh, the Peoples. Right? So indirect elected. And what is the role of the of this how should we put it? Confederal legislature? of this Bosnia, because all of this is at national level, right? National. So what is the role of the legislature at national level is to approve legislation and have oversight over the national um, 
you know, uh, executive. Uh, just like in other system, similar systems, most of the uh, uh, laws will come from here, will be made at the level of the executive, and will be have to pass by both houses and so on. But only in those aspects, however, which fall within the power of the, uh, of the uh, national government, of the Bosnia and Herzegovina government, of the confederal government, and these are again mostly about foreign affairs, military, common issues that are common to both of these. Remember that most of the government happens at the level of the government of each individual entity, not at the level of the, of, of, of the, the national, central level. Let's, let's put it that way. So, here you already see one of the problems, maybe, that having these reserve seats in the cabinet, and there are, uh, re, uh, in the presidency, right, Res seats that are reserved five to Serbians, five to Bosnians, five to Croats in the upper house, right? But how about the other ethnic groups? Where are the Romans represented here? Where are the, <coughs> the gypsy, the Roman, the, right? Uh, Following the, pol the political correct the name, where are the Jewish? There are other ethnic groups which are simply excluded from the upper house, right? It's only five Serbians, five Bosnians, five uh, Croats, right? And they're excluded, the other ones. So there's a problem here. Keep this in mind, just like here, right? Uh, and, <clears throat> you know, each ethnic group kind of elects their own thing, but how about the other ethnic groups? Right? It's the Bosnians and the Croats here who elect the Bosnians and the Croats here, but how about the other ones? Yeah? So there's, there's this problem we'll talk about. We'll talk about that a bit more. Okay, so this is at the level of um, Bosnia and Herzegovina. There is an executive which has a head of state plus head of government one, and there's a head of government two. It's basically a semi presidential system, only that you have a multi member presidency. And you have a PM and cabinet uh, who is appointed by these and approved by the by the legislature. Sort of semi presidential system only with the multi member presidency. And with seats reserved and distributed based on the ethnic ethnic principle. Okay? Okay. Well let's go further. Because this is not all, right? We, I mentioned that actually most of the government happens, most of the governance happens not at national level, but at the level of the um, of the individual entities. So if this is the, 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 the governance at the level of the of the at the national level, yeah, this is the Bosnian and Herzegovina national level. Let's look at the individual governments at the level of the entities, because that's where most of the governance happens in daily life and so on. So let's look at the federation, federation, the Bosnian Croat Federation. Is the national, this is, let's look at the central, let's look at the governance and the level of the federation. So, you know, the federation part of Bosnia and Well, the federation, it tells you, first of all, that we're talking about uh, an entity that is actually federal in itself. So, Bosnia and Herzegovina, I'm going to make a little tiny map here, but you have it in front of you, I don't want to put it up again. Bosnia and Herzegovina, remember, is made of two entities. One is the Federation, the other is the Republic. We're talking now about the Federation, the Bosnian Croat Federation. The Bosnian Croat Federation in itself is a federal state. So in itself, the Bosnian Croat Federation is federal, which means that it has a uh, central government, and then it has entities that each have their own government. And they're called cantons. Again, applying the Swiss model, where the entities are called cantons. Think of them as counties or districts, right? But they're cantons, and actually each of them has important, have important powers of self-governance. And those different colored patches tell you, you know, in the map, show you that. It's important to understand this because the Republic, the Serbian Republic, Republic of Srpska, which is more accurate to call it that, that, that because not to confuse it with Serbia, right, the, the country. The Republic of Srpska is a unitary state. So the Republic of Srpska part is unitary, 
and centralized, while the Bosnian Croat Federation is a federal state in itself. Imagine Washington being a federal state in itself. It's not. It's a unitary state. There's only one government in Washington. There's only one central government. It's actually quite centralized, right? Which might delegate some of the powers to local, local, you know, Ellensburg and whatever cities, towns. But as such, the, the Washington, every single re region of the United States, which you call states here, but are regions, right? Washington, Oregon, California, these are unitary states. Because they only have one government, the state government, right? The, which we call in the U.S. state government, right? The, which has a governor and so on, legislature. It's unitary, right? Just like Republic of Serbs. The United States as a state is federal. But in the individual components, the, the, the regions are unitary. Here it's different. There are two, two components of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but one is federal in itself, and the other one is unitary. And why is this federal in itself? Because it's made of both Bosnians and Croatians and others, by the way. Okay, so let's so first of all, we need to understand that as a state, it is federal. Uh, and it has five cantons, it has uh, in total uh, ten cantons, um, and five of which have, are Boston, majority Bosnian, three that are majority Croatian, and two that are, there is no majority, which the ethnic map, map indicates. So of these cantons, five are majority Bosnian, three are majority uh, Croat, and two are completely mixed. Obviously, notice that five, let's say, majority Bosniak doesn't mean that there aren't other ethnic groups there. That's the essence of the thing. That you can't just draw a line and say it's only this. Okay, and remember that cantons have important self-governance power. That a lot of governance happens at the level of cantons, actually. So not at the national level, not even at the level of the government of the federation, but actually at the level of the individual cantons within the federation. That's where a lot of the government actually happens. Each canton has its own little government. But now we're talking about the government at the level of the feder federation, the Bosnian Croat Federation. It has an executive an executive which is a presidency. A presidency which has one president and two vice presidents. So that is the executive. The executive has one president and two vice presidents, and each of them is from a different ethnic group. Because remember, even the Federation of Bosnia, uh, the Bosnian Croat Federation, has is multi-ethnic, not only having not only Bosnians and Croats, but also Serbians. Okay? And so each is from a different ethnic group. There's a president and two vice presidents uh, who are indirectly elected, so not popularly. They are elected basically by the two houses of the legislature. And yes, you have guessed right, there are two houses because it's a federal, federal system. And the lower house is called the Federation House of Representatives and the Federation House of Peoples. So it's the same names as here, but these are, these, uh, these are for the Federation. Just for this part, not for the entire country of Boston, etc. So you have a Federation House of Representatives and a Federation House of Peoples, and you see it mirrors the central, the national level. The Federation House of Representatives is elected, obviously, popularly, as you would have guessed. So this is the Federation part. This one, right? National Federation part, Republika Srpska part. So, uh, the Federation uh, House of Representatives is elected by, uh, popularly by the entire population. But each ethnic group needs to receive a, cert uh, a certain number of seats. So, minimum four for each ethnic group. Now, how much they get is depending on how their proportion in the population, right? Because, you know, you have more Bosnians, they will elect more Bosnians and so on, maybe. It doesn't have to be. But there needs to be a minimum four seats for each ethnic group. Each are guaranteed. Okay? Then you have the House of Peoples. So the House of Representatives has 98 members. The House of Peoples has 58 people, uh, members. 
these, however, are not elected by the population, but they represent the cantons, the ten cantons. Okay? So it's basically, it's the, these, the members of the House of Peoples are actually members in the government of the cantons who actually meet there. So the upper house represents the cantons. And in the upper house, the Federation House of Peoples, these are not elected, but are actually appointed by the governments of each canton. To put it simply. In fact, they're members of And there are 17 from each ethnic group. So you see that here, the proportionality is not respected. Normally, there should be more Bosnians and Croats than Serbians, because in the Federation of Bosnia, uh, the Bosnian Croat Federation, the majority are Bosnians, are either Bosnians or Croats. But in the upper house, in order to make sure that the rights of each ethnic group are respected, this principle of uh, proportionality uh, is not respected. To protect. Just like here. Remember that here you have 15 members, 5 of each ethnic group. Why 5? Because, you know, it doesn't reflect the general exact distribution of ethnic groups, not necessarily. But in order to give each of the ethnic groups an equal say, so that none of these rights are crushed, just like here. So the same happens in the upper house of the federation part, where you have 17 Bosnians, 17 Croats, 17, even 17 Serbians, although the Serbian population in the federation is much smaller. But again, the problem emerges that how about the other ethnic groups? Of course, these are the three major ones that fought the wars, right? And killed each other. But how about the, the gypsy, the whatever, Jewish? That's, it's there. Okay, so let's move to Republika Srpska, which is this part. Which, as I said, it's not federal, it's unitary, right? It's unitary, there has been enough ethnic cleansing to make it a unitary state. But still, uh, they have reformed their, although it's a unitary state, they have reformed their constitution so that it still applies this consociational principle, this consensus principle. So you will have ethnic-based reserve seats, even in this country. In this, in this part of the Bosnia Herzegovina, the Republika Srpska. So Republika Srpska has a presidency, the executive has a presidency, which has a president and two vice presidents. Which need to represent different ethnic groups, but the president is always Serbian, because the, the Republika Srpska has a large Serbian majority. There are some ethnic groups, but smaller. And so the president is always Serbian, and the vice presidents are probably Bosnian and Croat. Okay, all of these are popularly elected. So the Republika Srpska part is, you know, one, one entity. Okay, it's like Washington. It's one entity. But it elects two, three, uh, a president and two vice presidents, usually directly, and usually these two are uh, from ethnic minorities, while the president is Serbian. Then there is a PM and cabinet, which also applies here, by the way, I, I forgot to say. That there is, so the executive has a president and two vice presidents, and there is a PM and cabinet, prime minister and cabinet. And as you can guess, then these would be mostly head of state and with some head of executive functions, and this would be purely head of executive. So you see a semi presidential model both nationally and then at the federation and then at the Republic level. It's three, sort of like centrally, you have a semi presidential model, and then in each of the entities you have a semi presidential model. Okay, so the Republika Srpska has a presidency made of a president and two vice presidents. Um, there is a PM and cabinet, right? As you would expect. And in the cabinet, you will have seats reserved for, the, for other ethnic groups. Just like here. In all the institutions, both at national level and at the levels of each of the governments of each entity, you will have seats reserved for ethnic groups, just because the reserved or guaranteed, right? Or guaranteed in the legislature and in the executive. Again, in this principle of not allowing any of the institutions to be dominated by one ethnic group, because that whole domination principle, dominance principle, was what was the wars were about. And the cleansing is about imposing, right? Dominating, assimilating. And if you reserve these seats to different ethnic groups in every institution, no matter their 
weight in the population, especially in the upper house. The upper houses, you see, are reserved in a, in a non-proportional uh, way to, um, to the different ethnic groups to make sure that there's a check on, you know, possible aggressions from the other ethnic groups. So it has a two-chamber parliament. There is a... Um, uh, National Assembly, National, okay. Assembly with 83 members elected directly by the population, and there is a Council of Peoples, again, you see the idea, right? Sort of a check on the National Assembly, which, however, is elected by the National Assembly, so indirectly. <coughs> Notice that the upper house, both at the central level and at the level of the component entities, are not elected by the people, but are elected by the, not elected by the entire population, but are elected by the ethnic groups, indirectly, right? Or at least by its or by other entities. Let's read it. By other entities. Here, it's elected by the Canton government, but the seats are distributed ethnically. Here, they're elected by again the legislature of the republic and or by the lower house, but, right, again, the seats are reserved ethnically in the same equal way. And here it's elected by the National Assembly, but the seats are, again, reserved uh, ethnically, an equal number of seats for each uh, ethnic group. Right? So National Assembly has 83 members, and there is a much smaller council of peoples, uh, and you have the size there in the, in the materials, but this one, however, is a later reform. It used to be unicameral. But they introduced this thing to have this sort of a check on ethnic interests, or on, on making sure that no ethnic interest is affected. And it's actually not a real upper house. These are fairly real upper houses. But these are fairly real upper houses. Um, this is this is more of more of a of a, of a you know a, a, a board or a sort of a um, I think it's about fifteen members. Um, it's it's sort of a check, a board, a council that simply checks that the laws passed by the National Assembly do not hurt any ethnic interests unilaterally. That's what it is. It's not really an upper house. This is the real powerful legislature in the Republika Srpska. National, the National Assembly, which is popular, uh, popular elected. Uh, <coughs> this one just checks that the legislation passed by the National Assembly doesn't hurt. Uh, they call it national, vital national interests. So, complicated enough. But you see why, right? The principle again is that representation is not only, you know, uh, there are several principles at stake here, several principles in action, which respect or try to respect and try to set up a system that doesn't encroach on any component. The components of the state, remember, that are territorial. There is a Bosnian Croat Federation and Republic of Srpska, so they are two entities, right? but it goes further down. So, right? The, the Bosnian Croat Federation is a federal state in itself, so it has a federal government and then local canton governments, which we're not going to deal with. While Republika Srpska has a unitary state itself, or a unitary entity itself. This is why you, you can see that how the, uh, the central government of Bosnia and Herzegovina is, is, is sort of a confederal arrangement. Because you see that most of the power is either with the Federation and the Republic, and actually in the Federation, a lot of it is actually with the cantons, the individual entities. The idea of, this is the idea of federalism, or confederal. This is why the, the United States was a confederal arrangement. Because there were 30 colonies with their own governments, and then they said, well, I guess we need some central government to do some stuff, and they set up a very weak central government. Then, it didn't work out for some reason, and they established a more powerful central government, but it a huge scandal. And you had different factions, federalists, anti-federalists, not agreeing, why do we establish this powerful central government? And since then, their fears have, been, have become true, because the federal government in the United States has become this huge monster. But it wasn't that way at the beginning. It was 13 colonies, then states, you know, deciding to have some 
and uh, some level of institutions for their common interests. The same here, but the other way around, because it was the result of, of a war that forced decentralization. Remember that the Bosnians, the Bosniaks, so to speak, right, the Muslim part, Bosniak, not Bosnian, right, all of these are Bosnian, but some are Serbs, some are Croats, some are Bosniaks, which is just an inventive name for those southern Slavs who are Muslims. And of course, it has other, have other cultural uh, aspects. Uh, so the principle is of self, local self-government, right? Of, of, of decentralization, of giving the local units, each of them, their own level of government. Okay? The problems with this, so what is one of the first, the, the, the federal slash confederal principle is one of them, one of the principles in action here. The other principle is in action here is of uh, ethnic representation, right? Because it's not only the entities are represented, but in every single element of, this, of, the, of, the, of the state, which is Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, you have also a separate principle of representation, which is ethnic representation. But the problem with this, and there have been some recent cases, uh, Euro European Court of Human Rights has, has emitted a decision saying that this is undemocratic, because you do that to protect each of the three major ethnic groups, but you re don't realize, right? Still, you didn't cover everyone because there are other ethnic groups, Roma, Jewish, and others, who are not simply included in this principle, in this ethnic-based principle. Now, understand that Dayton was set up to not to last forever, but to find a solution to keep the state together in a multi-ethnic principle, in a multi-ethnic society, a deeply multi-ethnic society, but not just multi-ethnic society, but what I mentioned before, a society that is uh, divided into. I'm going to erase this. Um, a society that is divided into by many overlapping cleavages, and here again that term we have discussed. And this is a this is a this is why, as I said in the syllabus, why this region raises such crucial crucial questions. I mean, it is a laboratory, and it, I included this in the syllabus, and you know it might sound like oh you're just saying that advertising trailers for an interesting movie, but it's not that interesting. But actually, there it is. I mean, this region is a laboratory for, for, to study and, uh, and apply some of the key concepts of political science uh, today and in the last, in, since, in, since modernity, the 200, last 200 years. Ideology, the two major ideologies that have done in the 20th century all happened here. And you saw the effects here. You know, uh, the principle of nations, ethnicity, uh, ethnic cleansing, genocide, everything. Everything happened in Central Europe, basically. Okay, so uh, so this this other uh, concept that I mentioned briefly, but I'm going to talk more about now, of consociational consociational democracy, consociational democracy. This idea, and I put a link to an explanation uh, to uh, to this, uh, invented by Aaron Leithart, uh, political scientist. Um, it's, it's, this is a model of democracy that is not based on normally democracy, right? Representative democracy, because that's what we live in, where people send their representatives to legislate for them, to govern them. A representative democracy is based on the majority principle. So those who have the majority in a society, right, get to decide for everyone. Actually, right? You have 50% plus one, you rule the others. Even worse, actually, in the United States or United Kingdom or other similar uh, uh, countries, where actually it's not the majority, it's the plurality. You don't even have to have majority to dictate your will on others. Because when you go to vote in your district, here, you vote for one representative, he doesn't need to have majority. There's a single member district for past the post. Right? They, he doesn't need the majority. He needs to get the most. If he gets 40% and everybody else gets less of the vote, he gets the seat. So in that case, 40% of the district runs the life of the rest. That's the system in which we live here, right? The, which SMB, FPP, increased uh, artificial majorities and so on, okay? Now, in societies, the way does this work? Well, you work because it, you put up with it, and it also works in societies that are more homogenous and whatever. But how about societies where, which are divided by very deep entrenched cleavages? And I mentioned that, right? What is a cleavage? It's a deep enduring division in society, right? Along certain ident identity lines, right? 
So, what if this society is divided by language one, language two, language three, religion one, religion two, religion three, region one, region two, re region three? Um, I don't know. Um, uh, economy one, economy two, economy three. Meaning those who are, let's give an example, orthodox, speak Albanian, uh, are in the East, and are poor, are all here, right? Are, and they all form one club. The other ones who speak, let's say, are Catholic and Hungarian and uh, in the middle, and mid, mid, middle class, and all live here, and then, you know, serve, uh, what does that say? Uh, 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 Czech and Protestant and in the West and uh, upper class, they all live here. The point is that a society will have always have cleavages, right? But these cleavages I mentioned before can be overlapping or sectorial, as one of the readings that I posted uh, calls them, or they can be cross-cutting. Normally, like in the United States or other countries, you have, um, you know, you might be Czech, right? You're in terms of language and Catholic and let's say middle class, right? But there might also be Hungarians who are middle class and Catholic, which means that you will meet at the Rotary Club and you'll meet at the church that these different identity divisions don't separate you absolutely. It's not like all Czechs who are, all Czechs are also Catholic or else let's say Protestant and upper class, while all Hungarians are Catholic and lower class, in which case they don't meet. There's no bridge between these, uh, these groups. Especially, and they live in the West and these live in the East. And this is what we define as what? Overlapping cleavages. Religion, language, region, economy, all of them divide, divide, divide. So all of them will live in one, one place, speak one language, go to one church, belong to one sphere of society in one part of the world, in one part of the, the, of the region, these to the other. These parts will not communicate. These parts will be antagonistic. These parts, there will be no one, it will be a state with a deeply divided society. How do you maintain such a state? Right? How do you maintain such a state? Well, Bosnia and Herzegovina is in many ways such a state in many ways such a state, which has become, you know, these cleavages, you know, clearly they're not overlapping regionally because they're mixed, right? But, you know, religion, ethnicity, language, language is not really because they all speak very similar dialect, right? But religion uh, and uh, ethnicity, right, but, uh, separates them, not because they believe different. Remember, religion has, no, no, has nothing to do with religion itself. It has to do with identity. The fact that ethnic identity is, divided, is defined based on that religious, uh, religious belonging, so to speak. But, you know, again, most of them don't go to church, actually. And only a lot of them believers. But it becomes a, you know, ethnic character trait. Check mark. Okay? So, because of the wars, because of ethnic nationalism in the 90s, they have become divided societies because of the wars. Before the wars, you know, these tensions that in the broader Yugoslavia could work out differently because here were the Croats and Catholics and the Western and the more richer were here, Serbians, poor Orthodox here, right? There's this whole clear division, right? They're here, you're here, Slovenes, they're there, right? Overlapping and also regionally separate. But these divisions that have torn apart Yugoslavia, ethnic, you know, which was a concoction, a construction, well, they happen to not separate, right, neatly, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The principle of the nation-state, defined ethnically, it, while it worked to a degree in defining Croatia, Slovenia, Serbia, it doesn't really, because all of these are multi ethnic themselves. But here's where from history, and again, this is why we studied all, all that we studied this, this quarter, because in order to understand what this is, and how 
that the reality is much more complex than these political models that we apply today. Uh, this is Boston. How do you create then a state in a society where the model, the political model, is ethnic nationalism? Right? And that's what this whole structure tries to attempt, at least temporarily, and then the idea is to streamline it. But in order to create a state, to maintain a state in a country that was ravaged by genocide, by, well, at least ethnic cleansing, if not genocide, how do you do that? How do you get them to live together, the Jews and the Nazi Germanys, in the same place? Well, they eliminated the Jews, so it was easy to live together, because there was no together anymore. But how do you do it in a place where they didn't leave? How do you do it in the next day after killings? How do you do it? That's the attempt. Well, think of Iraq. Why is it not state? Think of Syria, think of whatever. These are tribal, Syria is a tribal society. There doesn't, there is no such thing as Syria. There are different ethnic religious groups with one state that has fallen apart. There is no Syria. Okay, and so on and so on. Okay, but here's the other side. We're going to say, well, okay, this looks nice. Okay, this looks like it protects, you know, it applies this consensational model. What is the consensational model? It is the opposite of, uh, of winner takes all. It is the opposite of SNDFB. It is the opposite of a majoritarian principle. Because it says that in a society that is so deeply divided, and always the one of the ethnic groups will be smaller than the others, you cannot apply the majority principle because then ethnic group A will always win. Ethnic group A will always win. And ethnic group B will always suffer. That's not democracy. It might apply the majority principle, but it doesn't respect human rights and so on. So you apply a consociational model. So in the government then, you will reserve seats to these different ethnic groups in the proportion in which they are present in the society. So you won't apply the majority principle, but you will reserve seats in the parliament, and why not also in the cabinet, and why not also in the bureaucracy, to the different ethnic groups. So one of them is not exploited, eliminated, oppressed, and so on. And you're going to say, well, that sounds nice. And indeed, you know, it sounds nice, and you know, it protects those who might be you know, threaten. But here's the downside of it. Just because you're part of an ethnic group, do you, does it mean that you all think alike? No. Right? No. Right? Uh, what if these seats are reserved to these ethnic groups because of their ethnicity, but does that mean that they're competent? No. So, the articles I posted, uh, you know, also a couple of articles about the current situation in Bosnia, the problem is that the people, right now, it's 20 years, 20 years since they, 20 years already since they, then. peace agreement. <clears throat> you have a situation in which the people are outraged and up in arms because the political elite established in the system that is very rigid in order to protect ethnic groups actually has maybe become, this is the logic of power, it's very corrupt. And they hang on to these positions because they have them by virtue of this, these ethnic, you know, reserved criteria, but also because they are very able to play the ethnic card. Okay? That's a very, this is why nationalism, this is why communists in Central and Eastern Europe, many of them have become nationalists. Because that's one of the easiest ways to keep, hold on to power by fueling, you know, ethnic fears, ethnic hatred, and whatever. That's one of the easiest ways. Tell the people that you're under attack, they're going to vote for you. That applies to any country. Apply it in your mind to situations in the United States as well. Okay? To, uh, for what reason? For the reason to understand that this is not something remote and whatever. Or think of the fact, what if the United States would be united with Mexico, right? Then Mexicans would, you know, govern you and or Canadians and together they would have a larger majority than the United States. Or whatever. Okay? You know, why not? Right? Why not be together? And so on. And then, wouldn't you want your ways of life to be protected and so on? See, th see things are harder than we imagine. Okay. Um, um, so, the consociational model, you know, is democratic, is, is a way to maintain a society together, a state together rather, when you have deep divisions in society. But the downside of it is that it loses the, as we see in the Bosnia, 
depends on it doesn't have to be, but the one of the downsides can be that it loses the accountability principle. Because these are reserved seats, so they no longer depend on, you know, competence necessarily. People get there because of their ethnicity, and let alone the fact that I mentioned, which is the other problem, that in the Bosnia and Herzegovina, there are three ethnic groups that are taken into consideration when applying this consociational principle. Which is a wonderful thing, by the way, right? But, oh, there's no absolute solution, right? We discovered downsides, and the downside is that, well, how about the other ethnic groups, which are tinier? Because they are also, you know, represented in many ways, but they don't, they don't have these reserved seats, right? Presidency, one Bosnian, one correct on Serbian. Gypsies are where? Roma. So, um, in Bosnia, the, the, the big problem now is that you have a, la, the, the, a good part of the population is extremely dissatisfied with incompetence, the incompetence of those who are in power. Those who are in power who are basically the same elites, yeah, the same elites, who are there because, well, it's the same uh, political uh, 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 elite and uh, they, they hang on to power, they get re-elected because these are the available choices, but they're not competent, they're not, they don't produce results. They talked about the last parliament being the last uh, national legislature, central legislature being one of the worst of the worst, passing only a hundred laws in four years, not being basically not doing not doing much, uh, not doing much. And in many ways, these elites are com com you know they like the system, they like they don't want to change it because they hang on to their seats and so on. On the other hand, there's another part of population which is still responsive to the ethnic nationalistic rhetoric. So they can be told that way, maybe it's now now time now for the Republika Srpska to join Serbia. That's always there. And there are politicians who manipulate that and ethnic rhetoric, you're on we're under attack. You know, we all you all know what, what this rhetoric is. You you know it's all it's all around us. Okay, we're under attack. So here's the other side. Okay. There is still the danger of ethnic nationalism. There's still these pools, these centrifugal pools. And there's still no way to solve the fact that this is a multi-ethnic society, deeply multi-ethnic. There's no way to clean them up and so on. So I posted some of the, those articles to kind of give you more about these, the, the, these conundrums. But anyway, the, the essence of the, I mean, the point here was to, of, the, of, the, of this case study, is not to talk about everyday politics, because remember, by the way, you know, you have reserved seats for the three ethnic groups, or you will have them in, in the legislature, but by the way, in each ethnic group, you have different parties, right? You have left, you have right, you have center, in each ethnic group, right? Uh, so, you know, they don't all vote for, they don't have one, all one party. You know, you have different parties within each ethnic group, just to give you more... Uh, Information. But we're not going to focus on that. The point of this is to give you an example of a fascinating state building attempt, attempting to form a stable functioning state, functioning state, a political system, which needs to be reformed, but in what sense and how do you maintain those protections, you know, in deeply, not in a multi ethnic society, but in a multi uh, post war, post conflict society. How do you keep maintaining peace? And remember, this is not a remote thing. Right? Just think of Iraq, the fact that, you know, after the invasion, we remove Saddam, and you discover that there is no Iraq, because there are actually three entities, Sunni, Shia, Kurds. That's what you have. So how do you build Iraq, which is a construction, it's an abstract invention that was invented after World War II? How do you maintain it? That's still the conundrum that we're facing. Same in Afghanistan, which never, for example, never, you know, never was a state in the way we understand centralized states. It, it was always uh, a com what lives there, who live there, are many different ethnic tribal groups. And they all have, for, throughout history, governed themselves. The idea that we put them under this abstract thing of called Afghanistan with a central government, they, that central government never was effective. Real power always, throughout history, was in the regions. Right? So that's, that's reality. That's, that's, that's the world. Okay? It's the mistake to think that you can ignore that and change it overnight. These are lessons into that. These are lessons to do that.